In this video, we're gonna go over the installation of an HID projector retrofit kit into the first gen Tacoma headlight housings. This particular kit is the Acme H1 standard by Xenon kit from the retrofit source. It's a super price friendly kit, comes with everything that you need to make a successful retrofit into your truck and that's largely why I chose it. But we'll get into more of why I decided to go this route as well as comparisons between what I'm currently running and these new projectors. So without further ado, why don't we get into the installation. The kit from the Retrofit Source is gonna come with everything that you need to complete this um, job. You will have some options to choose from, like such as your shrouds, uh, what style you want. You can choose to add in halos if you want as well. You'll get to choose the color temperature of your bulbs. And then there is a selection for the relay or the wiring harness here, uh, but this is H4 on this model of Tacoma, so that's what we got here is the moto control uh, wiring harness there which will help us install this into the Tacoma but you'll also get um, your speedy start ballasts as well and then uh, the projector unit itself which has the cutoff and everything all built into it um, and then you can choose to add like a resealing glue like I have as well I just got this as a precautionary uh, measure. Uh, I'll probably end up using it, but at least have it on hand. If I don't need it, then I don't need it. But yeah, the kit comes with everything you need, which is awesome. The next thing we'll want to do is strip down our headlight. Uh, I opted to buy brand new headlights because mine are pretty brittle on the plastic as well as pretty hazy um, and they've already been fixed once so I figure if I was going to go through this process I'd just go ahead and pick up new headlights for it and start fresh but we'll want to strip it down and that involves taking off the clips on the sides of the headlight and then you'll also want to remove your the rubber here and a bulb if you happen to have one in there these came um, with a bulb in them that I won't be using but then yeah once you get that good you'll want to take off like if there's any paper stickers in here as well um, <clears throat> take those off just so they don't burn or anything like that in the oven but then other than that we'll go ahead and put this whole assembly in uh, the oven You'll also want to get some tools prepared to help you pry the lens off of the housing. This is what I'm going to attempt to use. Now we're going to want to work quickly to separate the lens from the housing. this one back in the oven for a little bit longer find a good spot to get a lift on there the corner all right there's headlight number two Make sure that the lenses are somewhere safe so you don't get to worry about dust or fingerprints on the insides of them. The outside's fine. This will get dirty anyways as we work on it, so that's fine, but just make sure you keep those safe. And the next thing we'll do is we'll take a Phillips screwdriver and remove the inside little shroud piece here. So now that we have that done, we're going to move to the projector and remove those three small Phillips screws there, which will remove the bulb holder. Um, and then we'll be fitting the projector into the housing. It's important though, you'll want to test the cutoff here with the positive and negative leads with a 9 volt battery and make sure that the cutoff, which is 
this deal in the inside here make sure that functions properly so you want to actuate it a handful of times just to make sure <clears throat> now before we install the projector into the headlight housing in our case we'll want to install the shroud first if you happen to be using these same shrouds because they actually mount um, to the projector itself and I was able to recycle the screws from the old bulb holder on the old headlight here I was able to recycle those and use them to mount our shroud on here. If you order different shrouds or go a different route, you might have to glue the shroud to the projector. Uh, so that'll just kind of depend on what way you end up going. So now comes the fun part where we get to mount the projector into the headlight housing. Uh, the kit's probably gonna come with two sets of kind of mounting hardware. There's a smaller set and I believe this is for our H7, uh, but this larger set we're gonna use in our instance because this is an H4 housing. So the first thing we'll do is we'll stick this little rubber grommet or washer onto the back of the projector housing. And then it's gonna be installed into the headlight with the solenoid of the projector cutoff facing down. So we'll feed those wires through now there's going to be a little tiny gap you might be able to see it, a little tiny gap right over here that will be able to slide these wires through so they don't get pinched and then the alignment uh, kind of channel in the projector is going to be up here at the top and then we will grab the h4 uh, alignment ring um, the retrofit source says to install it with the curved side facing inward, but that doesn't seem to work with these headlight housings. It doesn't seem to get enough pressure um, onto the projector itself. So I found that installing it this way um, with like kind of the concave uh, portion facing outward is actually going to work a little bit better like that. And then we have our nut here. And this nut will then thread on to the back of the projector. Now you don't want to tighten it down all the way just yet. So that's in there and installed and you can see the wires run through right here in this little gap uh, for the cutoff. And you can see that it is now installed into the housing. Um, we'll just make sure everything looks good and then we'll do a final snug on that bolt there to firmly seat the projector into the housing. The final step to this process will be installing the HID bulb um, locking ring into the back of the projector. So just as we took it off, we'll put it back on with the three little screws and then for the ring itself, uh, there's one other component, which is the actual little spring piece that holds uh, the bulb in. And so that'll just go into these two little holes here, like so. And then basically the clamp will then align uh, like this and lock the bulb in. And that's it for installing the projector into the housing. And then we'll go ahead and move on to the next step, which is going to be putting in new sealant and getting the headlights sealed back up. All right, so the bulb holder is now in and the headlight is basically ready to go. So now we're gonna repeat all of these steps for the other headlight and get that other projector in. All right, so the final step is to put in some of this resealing glue into the headlights. Uh, you probably could get away with reusing what's there. It, l it looks pretty good in my case, but I'm gonna go ahead and put just the thinnest little amount of this in here anyways to make sure we get a nice seal. Um, this comes pretty wide, so you'll want to stretch it out uh, into a fairly thin strip that fits in there and then only use as much as you need. So like if you don't need very much in a certain area, you can stretch it thinner uh, to get around that area. But definitely um, don't put a ton in here. You don't wanna create a, a mess for yourself um, when you're squeezing the headlights back together. So what we'll do is we'll just lay this around the edge and then we'll be ready to put it in the oven 
One last thing we'll wanna do after we're done laying this in here is make sure you clean everything out of the headlight, especially on a chrome one like this. Make sure you get rid of all fingerprints. That's why I'm wearing gloves so I don't leave oils in there. But just make sure it's nice and clean. There's no dust in there because once it's sealed, um, it's gonna be a pain to clean that out again. So now comes the attention to detail. Make sure you take your time. And then once we get that rubber in there, we'll go ahead and put the lens back on like so. And then we'll stick it into the oven. And then when it comes out of the oven, we'll clamp it closed into its final position when the, the rubber is all moldable and can be squeezed into place. All right, now that the headlight's fresh out of the oven, we're gonna go ahead and press the lens in. Put the clips on the sides as well once you get it seated right. That'll keep the side down. And stick this clip on. Boom, and that's basically all there is to it. Now we'll let this dry for 30 minutes. All right, we just finished both the headlights. This one just came out of the oven, so we just clamped it together and now we're gonna let it uh, cool down and then the fun part comes, installing them into the truck. So lucky me, I'm gonna have to actually remove my front bumper to get my grill out so I can get the headlights out. You won't have to do that if you have the stock bumper or one that doesn't have any hoops like this. But if you have an aftermarket bumper like the ARB one that has hoops that prevent the grill from coming out, you will have to take the bumper off. All right, we got the front bumper off. That actually wasn't too bad. So the next step is gonna be removing the corner lights and that's just one screw here and you'll just kind of pop the light out. And then we'll be popping out clips. So there's gonna be uh, four clips up here on the top and you basically just push that little tab in right there, you push it down. You'll see it clip, uh, or click I should say. Um, so yeah, four of those on the top. And then, let's see, you can kind of see down in here, you're gonna have three um, along the bottom. So same thing there, four on top, three on bottom. And then there'll be a, there'll be a clip uh, right here, oops. There we go. There'll be a clip right here and you'll get it from behind this little hole here. So, all right, now you can see what these little clips are here and uh, how they work. Basically, you just push down on the little tab there. You might want to buy some extras of these though because they could be brittle um, and they could break on you. And uh, you can see there's this one down here as well and then one back here and one back over here and you can see how that clip right there works basically just gotta get your finger in there and pry the two sides apart um, and it's inside this hole down here which you can reach from the back side so now we're gonna remove the headlights and that's gonna be these two screws right here on the side and then these screws right here um, for the little bracket um, that holds this portion on so those will come out as well and we'll be on the way The process is the same for both sides, just two outside bolts and then one on the inside here and you just gonna have to shimmy this over a little bit and it'll come out. All right, so what I'm doing before I get the headlight in is I'm gonna be fitting up the connectors. Uh, it looks like this is maybe an extra connector. It went through um, this little waterproof like grommet here and had these these leads on the end of it and there's literally nothing that it would connect to so 
confused about that, but I'll report back and let you know in a moment if these are needed or not. But cut them off, and then we're going to feed these wires right here through the extra holes in the little waterproof grommet. That will control the high beam, and then all of this stuff will plug into the ballast here. There's the two plugs for that. Um, so yeah, we're just going to test um, fit things and at least get the bulbs and everything in the backs of the headlights before we um, insert them into the truck. You can see I got this little rubber grommet now seated right up against the bulb and then this is going to come over and seal everything together and I got the high beam, the cutoff um, wires through the little holes in there as well and then these will plug into a connector. Alright, it is wired up. You can see this is on there and it's a nice seal in there. Um, I ran those cables into the plug that it comes with and there's the little rubber seals are down inside there you can't see them but make sure you pay attention to where the positive and negative go on here make sure they match up to the high beam so you can see where the clip um, the little hook for the clip is and then match it up with the hook there and so yep just now for the install, we're literally gonna reverse the process that we had before to get the headlight in the truck. Now that we have the headlights in all nice and tight, we can go ahead and install the grill again and replace any clips that may have broken uh, when you were taking it out. Oops. Clips may need a little bit of alignment as well. That's normal. Grill is in. So the next component of the install is we're gonna find a spot for our ballasts. Um, I'm thinking probably somewhere right off the side here, just use a self tapping screw, I think. Um, that way we can get it in the same spot on both sides. And yeah, that'll take care of at least installing that portion, so. Okay, so I totally lied on that. So they give you a bolt here um, with a nut and so there was already a hole in the front right here so I bent the bracket that came with it and we mounted it right here and then it basically just hangs down right here uh, by the headlight and there's enough room for the connectors so we'll move on to the other side do the same thing because we have the same hole right here and there's plenty enough space in here for it to hang down and then once we do that then we'll start with the harness okay so we got the harness mounted. It's pretty tight in here with all the wires. Um, this was the best spot I could find. You need to have this basically vertical. You can have a little bit of tilt to it, but it needs to be um, hanging as straight down as you can get it. So I still have a little bit of room here to aim that down. That'll keep water out of the inside of it. Now, um, ran the positive lead up here. This will get connected to the battery. And then we're gonna go ahead and run the rest of the harness to the other side. Um, there'll be a ground on each side that you'll just have to ground somewhere good. Um, we have this one to sort out still as well, so we'll probably put this on the frame ground that's uh, right back there. And yeah, tuck these wires away, and then we'll be ready to uh, test fire the headlights. All right, so ballasts on both sides are mounted. We ran the wires through. I slipped the wires behind here and tucked them up behind another. There's a, another run of wires back here from the factory. So tucked them up against that. They're not touching the radiator or anything. And then there is the um, controller, the harness here. But that plugs into your normal um, H4 relay. And now the only thing left to do is hook up the positive on the battery here. And we'll be ready to test. All right, they function, cutoffs work good. Everything looks pretty good. Super pumped. All right, now that we've verified that they work and function, high beams work, everything works good. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the bumper back on, make sure we got all the bolts in. And uh, yeah, then we'll be pretty much wrapping this up and the next portion is to get them aimed and make sure they're pointing where they should. 
All right, so the headlights are in the truck and on, and you can see that the cutoff is nice and level between the sides. Um, I already aimed them, and that process is you pull right up next to the garage and mark on the wall with a piece of tape, and then you back 10, away, 10 feet away from the vertical surface, whether it's a garage or a wall or whatever, and the beam should hit like an... Um, 0.8 of an inch lower than the line that you taped when you were right next to the garage. So I already did that. Um, we're golden for at least testing tonight. And uh, yeah, we should be good from there. Headlights are looking pretty good. There is a little bit of condensation inside. Um, I'm thinking that the headlight isn't breathing well. It doesn't really help that I uh, put this together in uh, winter and in the garage. So I'll probably have to pull it into the garage and pop the rear cap off here and let them dry out a little bit but uh we'll see what it does um but yeah there's a little tiny screw i don't know if you'll be able to see it down here that's how you adjust it up and down and it's a four mil socket to adjust it so here is the current output with the stock headlights with um, just some cheap Amazon LED bulbs in them. These were a pretty big upgrade from the halogen bulbs and I liked them quite a bit. Uh, this is the low beam. And now that's high beam. And back to low beam. Okay, now we're back in the driveway and now you can see the cutoff of the stock headlamps with the LED bulbs. You notice there's a, a lot of glare, um, not a super clean cutoff on the low beams, um, really not super ideal. Now we'll turn on the high beams and you can see a lot of upward glare on there. Not, I mean, not super important for high beams, but still not very pretty back to low beams on that. All right, so we're back out here in the same spot we were originally. I'm curious to know if this will really be apples to apples. There's a little bit of snow on the ground, and unfortunately, I don't think that's gonna go away for a little bit, so grabbing this footage now. Um, but this is low beam. The settings on the camera are exactly the same as they were uh, when we came out here with the old headlights. So. This is low beam, and you can see there's a nice cutoff there um, out in the distance. Now we'll flip to high beam, and that's the high beam. A little bit of fog out there, and back to the low beam. High beam. Low beam. So yeah, I'm loving these so far. The light looks great. I think they are a lot brighter, but I'm curious to see how they stack up side by side. All right, so we're back in the driveway, and now you can see how the projectors look at the same camera settings we had for the old headlights. You can see how clear that cutoff is on these headlights as well. Um, so this is the low beams, and that is the high beams and back to low beams on those very, very minimal glare above the cutoff. In fact, a lot of that's probably just light reflecting off of the truck. And then as you can see, when the cutoffs go down, we have those nice high beams. Overall, much, much cleaner, much brighter, and uh, more uh, whiter white, uh, not as blue as the LEDs. Now we can really see on the left, the projectors have that nice clean cutoff and a much brighter and whiter light. Uh, that cutoff is really important when you're putting higher intensity light down the road so you don't blind oncoming traffic. Uh, we can see on the right that that cutoff is not very defined at all and there's a good amount of glare um, above where the light mainly focuses and some of this is a component of LED bulbs in a halogen housing. Something to illustrate here with the high beams on is that one might think the image on the right with the stock housings would 
produce more light further down the road, but that's actually not the case. The light scatters so much that it loses its intensity and doesn't go nearly as far as the projectors do. If you look at the projectors on the left, you can see it's much more focused and brighter. Um, you can look and you can't see any of the contours of the garage door in the brightest part of the image, whereas those are still visible on the right with the old housings. So. The projectors are much, much brighter and that focusing of the light allows them to put that light further down the road, whereas the stock housings, that light's going to scatter pretty quickly. Here we can see pretty clearly that the projectors are quite a bit brighter than the stock headlights on the right. You can also see that the light is a lot more even and doesn't fall off as quickly as the stock headlights did. You can also see the difference in color temperature as well. Here with the high beams on on the road, we can clearly see that the light of the stock housings on the right scatters a lot more and we don't get as much light pushed down the road as we do with the projectors on the left. You can clearly see the end of the road on the left, whereas you can't see that on the right. So now we'll get into why I went this route. And the number one reason really is to just get more light down the road. Um, I'm driving really early in the morning a lot um, and sometimes at night and there are a ton of deer around here. Um, I've hit one before, thankfully not in the Tacoma, but I don't want it to happen again. So getting that light down the road is super important. The high beams on these new projectors are actually brighter and throw f light further down the road than uh, my cheap uh, Amazon light bar that's on the bumper. So they are definitely the real deal and a huge upgrade over stock. Um, and so that was super important for me was getting that light down there. And also even not just using the high beams, but also the low beams are much better and much brighter, which is important when you're driving around town or you can't always have your high beams on or auxiliary lights on. And the other reason was looks. I think the looks of projectors are awesome. Um, I was exploring buying some pre-made ones, uh, you know, from some other people that make them out there and ultimately the cost was just not something I wanted to pay. I didn't want to pay, um, you know, 400 plus dollars. Uh, for me to do this, it was a little bit less than $300, like somewhere around $280, $290 to do and that's because I bought new headlights as well. Uh, mine were pretty old and they'd already been polished once and they're hazy and the plastic was brittle so I figured I would just buy new ones and that would allow me to retrofit them outside of the truck and not have to worry about doing it all in a day so you can certainly go that route yourself um, if you don't go that route and you want to reuse your own headlights then the kit is only around $140 $143 if you add in the uh, retro rubber resealant, which I definitely recommend um, because that will keep the headlights kind of serviceable. <clears throat> if you use like an RTV or something like that and you need to take it apart in the future, it's gonna be difficult if not impossible to do that. Whereas this will heat up again in the oven and you'll be able to um, take it back apart. So yeah, the kit was really awesome. Again, I got that from the Retrofit source. There'll be a link in the description for the kit. Um, I picked up some TYC housings from Amazon. Uh, now that I've had a chance to drive uh, in the dark and the early mornings out on a trip with these headlights, I can tell you without a doubt this upgrade was 110% worth it. It's actually probably one of my most favorite upgrades recently. Like I absolutely love how clean the light looks, uh, the more modern look and styling of the projectors and the cutoff and the high beams are phenomenal. So I am super pumped um, with how this turned out. So yeah, if you guys are looking at doing this project yourself and you've been curious about uh, putting projectors in or retrofitting your own headlights, I'd say go for it. It's really not that hard. Um, and you can save yourself a couple bucks and uh, learn some new things and be proud of your craftsmanship and the work that you put into your vehicle. But anyways, I hope that this video helped you guys through this process, especially if you're on the fence and uh, hopefully it helped uh, you guys successfully install your own retrofits if you chose to tackle those yourself. But anyways, leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think about uh, this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.